in the name of God, who knows us better than we know ourselves. Amen. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. So the kingdom is like a dinner party that makes us absolutely lose our minds. The word is out, but our invitation has yet to come in. So we manage the uncertainty and the embarrassment and the resentment by focusing on everyone but ourselves. Anything to avoid feeling the feels, anything to avoid examining our inner lives head on. To the unresponsive, we attribute willful indifference. To the ungrateful and the unmoved, we attribute arrogance or distraction or petty obligation. To the unwelcoming, we attribute lethal resistance. To the enraged host, then, we attribute murderous vengeance. I mean, how else could we make sense of our not yet having received an invitation? Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a feast we've never seen before. Roasted oxen and seared calf, almonds and olives and wine intoxicating floral incense and dazzling cascades of fruit and flowers, an ecstatic sensory overload only the worst kind of person could refuse. Don't we know how much the king has been looking forward to this occasion? How much hard work the king has put into preparing the perfect event? How proud the king is to share his joy and generosity with us. Don't we know how hurt and heartbroken the king will be if no one comes? How awkward it will be. How angry he will get if the invitation goes unanswered. If the kindness goes unreciprocated if the love goes unrequited. Everything is ready, the king says. But are we? Still no invitation, but rumor has it, the king is out for blood. It seems uncharacteristic, but apparently some of those on the guest list literally killed the messenger. Yep, seized him beat him, kill them. So the king, I guess, and I don't know this for sure, but the king, I guess, was done with it and had them all killed and leveled their town, just plain wiped it off the face of the earth. Wow. Just wow. I mean, who would even do that? Who'd kill the messenger? I know I wouldn't. I mean, at least I think I wouldn't. Pretty sure, but wow. Well, still no invitation. But I gotta say, I'm glad I wasn't part of that first batch. I mean, what an awful group of people. I've got to imagine the king is stressed, though, worried about wasting all that food, worried about dishonoring his family, worried about embarrassing his son. I mean, I have to imagine... He's feeling a bit desperate. I wonder what he'll do. Well, still no invitation. But there's a group of young men shouting in the street outside my window. Apparently the king, in his desperation, has just decided to go ahead and invite everyone. I mean, literally everyone. Like the good and the bad. Seems reckless to me. And let's be honest, can he even really enjoy himself at the party if he's having to worry about who it is that shows up, how they act, what they take, 
what they break. It sounds awful to me. Probably totally uncomfortable for the newlyweds, but he's the king, and I guess the king gets to do what the king wants to do. Not how I would do it, but... So we'll see. I mean, I don't know. I'm not even sure what I'm doing tonight. The invitation just seems so impolite. I mean, so impersonal. And really, it just feels like an, an afterthought anyways. Part of the B squad, that stings a bit. And I'd probably show up like a bit of a sourpuss anyways if I showed up at all. Or worse, I'd maybe even show up out of fear, scared to death that if the rumors are true, I'd be annihilated like the others if I didn't. Hug. Seems like I'm damned if I do and damned if I don't. This whole party is turning into a real headache. But it's getting late in the day, so I better make up my mind. All right, update. I'm here. I got in with the rest of the riffraff. Can't believe who else is here. Not a crowd I'd ever mix with on my own. I mean, from my low profile perch in the corner, I can see at least a dozen infamous sinners. And I'm not talking dirty hands here. These are class A felonies. The stuff that'd get you killed if we were following what used to be known and upheld as the law. No doubt though, the food is delicious and the drinks are divine. And of course the happy couple is giddy and gorgeous parading around the room atop the shoulders of a fairly motley crew of strangers, one of whom I know to be a tax collector. I'm pretty sure I've seen several of the others begging in the market. And that guy right there, adulterer. And that gal right there, prostitute. What in holy hell have I gotten myself into? This is just unreal that the king, who I used to hold in such high regard, would actually stoop this low to pull off this wedding banquet, all because his joy was just too much to contain, too much not to share. Well, it's a shame. I mean, I'm glad I'm here, but I just can't believe what I'm seeing. I mean, folks from every race and nation and religion, the upright and the awful, some from the establishment and some from the streets, some God-fearing and some who deny God altogether, and they're eating, and they're singing, and they're dancing, and they're rejoicing together, totally oblivious, all swept up in the occasion, all savoring the king's reckless generosity. <laughs> idiots. Well, I'll say this. If this is heaven, give me hell, please. Ah, uh, here he comes now, the king, smiling from ear to ear, obviously hasn't seen who's in the room yet. Okay, now he's looking around taking stock, can't quite tell if he likes what he's seeing. He's just standing there at the entrance, scanning the room. Oh, wait. He sees me. He's looking this way. Ah, oh, there it is. The signature I see you gesture. I nod. Slight wink. Oh, God. No. He's walking this way. He's bringing his friends. What do I do? What do I do? All right, play it cool. Never let them see you sweat. That's what I always say. Now, straighten up. Flash those pearly whites, but don't look them in the eye. Oh, God. I looked him in the eye. Say, how'd you get in here without a wedding robe? What? I was speechless. I mean, really, with all the hoi polloi in here desecrating the space, he's concerned about what I'm wearing? Oh gosh, I said, I'm so sorry. I mean, with everything else on my mind, I just totally overlooked it. I got out of the house without it. I mean, I know you said that everything was ready, but I guess I didn't take the time to make sure that I was ready, too. Well, that breaks my heart, 
he said. I mean, I just wanted you to come and to share my joy without any worries or without any distraction. It's really too bad. Yeah, I know. But did you see? And he cut me off. He cut me right off. Hey, guys, he says to his friends, bind him up, hand and foot. Get him out of here. He's not ready for this. Still comparing himself to others. And you know what they say about comparison. Yep, it's the thief of joy. And it's my party, so of course, I'm obliged to shield the joyous. And I couldn't believe it. They actually grabbed me actually bound my hands and feet. They threw me out. I mean, I thought I, was be, uh, I thought I was embarrassed before, right? I mean, I thought I was embarrassed being in there with this crowd, but I can assure you, as bad as it was to be in that room with the riffraff, it is way worse being out here. Because I can't use my feet to walk, bound as they are, I now have to depend on others to carry me. And because I can't use my hands to eat, bound as they are, I have to depend on others to feed me. Curious enough, though, and I have to admit, what was intended as a punishment seems to have become my greatest reward. Help I'd never have chosen has become my salvation. And the love and the kindness from others which I'd never recognized before has become my greatest joy. <laughs> it's funny. I used to think freedom was just about sticking up for myself. But now I see that freedom is really about kind of getting over myself. It's different, feels good. Less gravity trying to be God, and I'm finding more levity just trying to love God. Maybe the old story is true after all that when left to our own devices, we set our hearts and minds on the worship of false idols, as if the same believing and the same behaving that got us into this mess could also get us out of it. Perhaps the old story is right, after all, that only when we're able to see the world through God's loving and liberating and life-giving eyes can we ever hope to rise above the petty prejudice that divides us, to rise above the sin that holds our joy captive, to rise above the valley's rim that casts so deadly a shadow. The kingdom of heaven, we're told, may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. Well, a guy's got a hope, right? 